we would like the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be merciful upon others, upon all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. The first being showing mercy to the creatures of Allah and the second being achieving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, in another narration, he says, have mercy upon those on earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you. So to achieve the mercy during the month of mercy, we need to be merciful ourselves. Charity begins at home, my brothers and sisters, with your family members, with your siblings, with your spouse, with your parents, with your relatives. You need to make sure that you are merciful and forgiving. This is the month of forgiveness. To achieve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must firstly develop the correct relationship with Allah. Like I said, we must do that which we are supposed to be doing and stay away from that which we are supposed to be staying away from. Then we achieve mercy and then we achieve forgiveness. So the mercy of Allah comes before forgiveness because part of his mercy is that he is forgiving. He forgives through the quality of mercy. Amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. My brothers and sisters, if you were to look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an in Surah An Nur. And Allah says to him, Would you not like Allah to forgive you? If that is the case, then forgive those who have wronged against you. There was a man who spread rumor about Aisha radiallahu anha. This man's name was Mistah ibn Athatha radiallahu anhum jami'an. Remember, Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu used to spend on Mistah because he was a relative and at the same time he was needy. And it is our duty to reach out to the needy, beginning with our own family members and relatives who are needy. So when this man started spreading rumor about the daughter of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he was hurt and as a result he said, I'm never going to spend on this man again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses to say, forgive and embrace. Would you not like Allah to forgive you? So Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. If you would like the forgiveness of Allah, forgive others as difficult as it may be, release it and see how you achieve the forgiveness of Allah. To pause for a moment, my brothers and sisters, if Allah is encouraging you to forgive others, you need to know that it will help you health wise as well. It will be holistically beneficial when you release things. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. The more difficult it is to forgive, the greater the reward of forgiving and the more likelihood of you achieving the forgiveness of Allah one of the reasons again is because Allah calls himself the most merciful, the most forgiving. When you have shown that you have a quality of forgiveness where you could forgive someone who did something really bad against you, Allah does something much higher for you in order to show you and to make manifest the fact that he is the most forgiving. So your little quality of forgiveness, which was a big thing for us as human beings, compared to the great quality of Allah, ours is nothing, subhanallah. So Allah says, if you can forgive, I will show you, I can forgive that which is far greater, subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive us and he wants us to forgive others. When we say Ramadan is a month of mercy, a month of forgiveness, we start off with ourselves being merciful. And that is a point many people miss. People think when we say Ramadan is a month of mercy and forgiveness, it is only to achieve the mercy and forgiveness of Allah, not realizing that to get that mercy and that forgiveness, you have to be merciful yourself and you have to forgive 
yourself. Meaning you have to learn to forgive others. Then you will achieve the forgiveness of Allah and the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Allah does not have mercy upon the one who doesn't have mercy on the rest of mankind, on the people, an nas. So it's amazing how when we talk of the month of mercy, everyone is saying, Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. But you might be merciless towards those whom you live with, your spouse, your children, your in-laws, whoever else it may be, your parents, your siblings, your relatives and others, those who work for you, those who work with you, those whom you work for, those whom you interact with. You might be a merciless person who is vulgar and abusive. How would you expect the mercy of Allah when you are merciless? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says such a person will not achieve the mercy of Allah. So this month of mercy, my brothers, my sisters, don't make a mistake. Be merciful and Allah will be even more merciful. Amazing, so beautiful, so powerful. My brothers and sisters, be forgiving and see the forgiveness of Allah. You might say, well, it's very bad. This person has done something really nasty. My brothers and sisters, forgive them for the sake of Allah. And when you've done something really nasty in the eyes of Allah, he will forgive you as well because he is the most forgiving. One might say, well, you know, the person who's done this bad thing to me, I don't want to have a relationship with them like I did in the past, in the future. So we would say forgiveness is not connected to embracing all the time. These are two separate acts of worship, two separate qualities. One may not be deserved and the other one may be something we could do. For example, a person who's being really nasty and you've forgiven them, but you want to stay away from them. You are allowed to stay away from them to protect yourself from harm, be it the mental strain, be it your health that is affected by it, or be it just the unnecessary stress and tension. So you may stay away from people. That does not mean you haven't forgiven them or you don't want to forgive. I can forgive someone and still stay away from them. Ideally, if I were to forgive, I would develop a good relationship with them once again. But, but what is important to note is if they are not so sincere in seeking the forgiveness or if they have not sought forgiveness at all, what should I do? Sometimes I may want to forgive them even without them seeking forgiveness because that's what Allah does for us. He forgives our minor sins without us seeking forgiveness. And guess what? Even the major sins, if you were to die without seeking forgiveness and you were a believer, Allah says, it's up to me. I may forgive them all. My brothers and sisters, besides shirk, Allah says, I can forgive anything. This is why we say it is extremely important to protect ourselves from all forms of shirk and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the evil that we've done knowingly or unknowingly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But the point I was mentioning was to be able to forgive a person without them seeking forgiveness. The person didn't come to you and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I want you to forgive me. But you've released that from the burden that you've been carrying on your shoulders and it's gone, subhanallah. You may not want to associate with them much, no problem. There's nothing wrong with that. You may want to stay away from them, no problem. But you know you have released it, you've forgiven them. But when a person is genuine, they came to you, they showed you the remorse, they regretted what they said or did, and they asked you to forgive them, then there is a greater chance that you will not only forgive them, but you will embrace as well, subhanallah. So these are two different things. To associate with a person is one thing, and to forgive them is another. Not every time are the two connected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Is that if you want to achieve the mercy of Allah, you have to be merciful yourself. Those who are not merciful will not achieve the mercy of Allah in the holistic way. Similarly, 
If you want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah, learn to forgive others. Subhanallah, it is tough. But if you were to think of it, it's very, very balanced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, I want you to develop these qualities. It will help you. It will help you grow in so many other ways. Sometimes when we're holding the burden, carrying the burden of a sin that someone else has committed against us, it prevents us from developing ourselves and from growing in our relationship with Allah and even sometimes worldly growth. Our businesses are stunted. It affects our relationships with others. People come and vent their frustrations on those whom they love the most. You come home and you start shouting, yelling, swearing, screaming, which is unacceptable simply because you could not do that to someone who wronged you that day. But if you had released it and forgiven them and you didn't hold that in your heart at all, you would come back home smiling knowing that you did a good deed and Allah is so pleased with you that you will be able to feel the peace within your own home. Although something very negative may have happened to you during the day. Because this is the month of mercy and this is the month of forgiveness. We are speaking about the mercy and the forgiveness that we are supposed to be having. My beloved brothers, my sisters, when you forgive someone, you're doing it more for the sake of Allah and for yourself, not for them. Subhanallah. It's not necessarily for them because it's for you and for the sake of Allah. Allah is watching. So he will have even more mercy upon you and he will forgive you in an even bigger way. And for yourself, because you will be able to lead a healthier life, a happier life, a more content life. Think about it. Consider it and change the way you've been looking at this all along. My brothers and sisters, these are some beautiful pointers. And I thank Allah for giving us the opportunity to remind ourselves, myself included, to be able to be forgiving people, easygoing people, those who beam love, goodness, not those who beam hatred, malice, jealousy and negative qualities. I pray that Allah make our hearts filled with mercy and forgiveness towards others so that we can ultimately achieve the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah.